Hey guys, what's going on? Mike Glover Actual here with my special guest, DJ Shipley of GBRS. Good day, mate. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, this is gonna be fun, man. I, this is fun because um, uh, we're we're doing reacts off of uh, operational picture that I think ain't nobody seen. Yeah, nobody's seen that one really. No. No, and you look uh, super handsome in that picture. <laughs> Uh, I could tell why you you leveled up in uh, special operations, man. 19 years old. Shut up. Yeah. You were a 19 year old SEAL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with the budget 17. Oh my God! I didn't even know that was allowed. No, what, I think it was only four of us. Wow, dude, yeah. you're 19 years old in that picture. Yeah, yeah I turned uh, yeah I turned 20 overseas. Holy like crap! Three or four. I feel old now because I remember that time period and I am I was old. Um, so let's talk about this picture, because this is uh, 2005 Baghdad, Iraq. Yep. Um, what, tell me about the task org. Like, where were you at at the time? Right outside of Baghdad, we had a, a little firebase RPC. We had uh, rangers up on the hill. You guys had a, or uh, SF was up on the hill. You guys had like a palace up there. Yep. You guys had the best chow. You guys never shared it. Mm. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we're doing PSD for part of it, and then we do DAs out of, out of RPC. And it was awesome. Stayed busy. Five was a good year for Iraq, right? It was a decent yeah, year. But it was all it was all IEDs. We had to drive up and down Route Irish to get out. Irish was bad, dude. It was terrible. I mean, yeah. everybody was dying, and like we just didn't hit them. Like, yeah, we avoided them every single night. I don't know how the convoy right in front of us would smack it. Right behind us, they'd hit it, and we just luck. We just and, never hit one. And that was pre EFPs, but um, we were also rolling in like janky. Combination Humvee, soft skin uh, Humvees. We didn't have uh, we didn't have armor on the doors then. We didn't have turret shields up top. It was a a double stack can of fifty, and you basically used that as armor, so you hid behind that when you would pan. Wow. <laughs> swing the fifties. How long was that rotation? Six months. Wow. Six that um that picture in the background, um, all those pixels. Mm. That's a real cool pixel picture, man. Is that the one like you stare in, and then? Uh, a, a butthole comes out at you, three dimensional. <laughs> yeah, you got to get real close. Yeah, that's focus. so. That was all around that uh, that place because back then we barely had internet, mm -hmm. um, we barely had entertainment, and it was all just about war fighting, right? Yeah, I got my first email account over there. Um, that thing in the top right corner, that skull with the fire. You can see that. I mean, when we finally got turret shields, when we could uh, when we could flame up. All the Humvees, that's what we did. So that was practicing the stencil. So you wouldn't walk yeah. out there and spray paint all the Humvee. You had one shot or, you know, your platoon, she could kill you. Wow. <laughs> after tagging up the Humvee. So get the stencils right, get everything cool, and then go out there and... T team, uh, Jeremy Wise was on what? Uh, team 4. So when I worked with Team 4, all of their turret, sh turret shields had yeah, that so, red skull. So he was, on that, he was on that deployment with us, so we were on the same compound with Team 4. That's awesome, man. And we had Team 4, 5, and 7 all co-located, all doing joint ops the whole time. So you're a team 10 at the time. Yep. So I was in Afghanistan during this trip that you're in Iraq with team 10 and Siege of Sotov. Yep. Um, we were uh, a single company, Charlie, 2nd Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group, in six different fire bases uh, as far south as, um, I think even outside of Bagram, all the way through Nuristan to Nuray. But we had Asadabad, Jabad, the list goes on. And if you're, uh, you, if you know history, Operation Red Wings took place in 05. And uh, you guys, how was that divided? Because you, you're in uh, ba Baghdad. Did they divide platoons, one to go to Afghanistan, one to go to Iraq? Yeah, like Team 10 was brand new. That was, their, that was their second rotation, but their first full rotation. Oh, really? Yeah. So what do you mean? Because they, they stood up the team. Yeah, they stood up the team. So 7 and oh. 10 formed at the same time. Wow. So we were their first. Um, we were their first rotation to Iraq. So when when we split, half the group went to Afghanistan, half went to Iraq, and then our sister platoon went to Germany and staged. So they did three months there, and they were supposed to rip in. We did the whole six months in Iraq, and then the Afghan crew they were supposed to flip halfway through. Wow, that's when Red Wing happened. Yeah, it was a tragic circumstance because, I mean, Marcus and those guys were SDV guys, right? Yep. And then the platoon that responded were Team 10 guys yep. that winded up getting killed in the bird, right? Yeah, so the SDV-1 guys were in Augment, just an SR detachment, yeah. but deployed and, um, yeah. and supported Team 10. Crazy, man. Yeah, what what was that, what, were you downrange in Baghdad when you heard about the Afghanistan situation? Mm -hmm. What was that like for you guys? Uh, what was it like for you 
uh, individually as a young 19-year-old SEAL, and how is the morale of the unit? Crush this. We get crippled. <laughs> SEALs don't die off in any way, and yeah. especially not like that. So yeah. I remember walking past the jock, and the door opened up, and you could, you could see it. Guy ran out, very frantic, go get your OIC, brings him in there, and you could just hear it, man, like grown men just wailing, just bawling. Because wow. they knew, like, the entire bird's down, there's no way anybody survived. And then everything just kind of merged on Afghanistan. That was the only thing that mattered. Like, that was our own little personal 9-11. Yeah. And then damage control after that. Now we got to take care of all these families and Oof. the wives, all the children, just everything. Yeah. You know, we have to backfill all those people. We have to, we have to get new people in there to fill the bodies. It was a lot of guys, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 11 SEALs, uh, I think 19 total, but it was a whole crew of Night Stalkers. Yeah, Task Force. Like, yeah, MH47, if you guys aren't um, aware of that, there's lots of podcasts on it. Um, I even talk about it in my small role in it. My company, my scuba team, and my Halo team were intimately involved in rescuing Marcos the Trail with the Rangers. Uh, I was sitting on a HLZ, a helicopter landing zone kind of wait. I was the QRF to the QRF and monitored it on a radio, but I was super young too, just not 19 year olds young. young. Let's talk about some of your kit because a lot of people don't realize we went through so many evolutionary changes in the GWAT, the global war on terror, and we didn't have a lot. And as the war developed, we started getting more and more stuff. And I see, I mean, your stuff looks super squared away. Like you're so, wearing. So that right there, um, if you remember the, the soft armor we wore for PSD. Yes. So they didn't have a good, plate carriers weren't back then what they are now. You had to literally yeah. make your own. So everything sucked. They didn't have any side panels, but we had to wear the nine mil wrap around because the plates weren't standalone. Yeah. So we wore that. We stuck our plates in, and then we rigors taped them inside of that sleeve, and we wore rotation. This is the gray it. one, right? The gray PSD one. That's or is tan? tan. Yeah, tan one. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. And then that's a Blackhawk Rhodesian, three mags up front. Um, well, actually, it's three mags up front, two more on the sides. We cut open the flaps. So yeah. Stick radios in it. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, we strapped in the back, rain your own push to talk. But I mean, that thing was small nylon. I mean, you could ball it up, stick it in a cargo pocket. So yeah. it was super light, super, cl um, I mean, because you remember, we climbed up over walls all night long. Yeah. So we had to be able to deal with all that. Yeah. That's a normal PSD leather belt, because we weren't running helos. Yeah. We didn't see a helo the entire six months we were there. Never did anything. Um, so and we didn't six. have, well, with the belt thing, we didn't have battle belts back then. No. Right? It wasn't even a thing. No, we, no yeah. like, the only reason I had a pistol is because they made you. Yeah. Like, most of the old guys, if they didn't, they didn't have to, they didn't wear them. Yeah, I, I, that time period, that same year, I was sticking my Glock 19 in an SR25 mag pouch yeah. on my kit Same. and was never running like that. Uh, what else you got? You got? So let's talk about your gun yeah. because you have a, a Navy. The Navy's known for painting their guns, and the only reason we weren't known for that because we weren't allowed because we got in trouble for painting our guns. So that's Colt M4, 10-inch. Yep. The, the CQB is a PEC-2 up front. Yep. Pressure pad on a vertical grip, fixed iron sight. That is probably a B Myers flash hider. I can't look it. Uh, we were running cans back then, but a lot of times uh, guys would go through this weird thing where they'd say, pull your cans off, and nothing happened, nothing changed. Like they'd hear something from Fallujah, and they're like, everybody take your cans off. Like, okay. I, I heard it multiple times that they didn't want cans on because if the enemy couldn't hear the gunfire, they wouldn't get down. They would continue shooting, and. Interesting. Weird, weird school of thought at the time. It, mm. Like, you're so young, it, it made sense, I guess. Not really. And then ACOG with a doctor sight on top. Smart. For CQB. It was a J point, a little J point. Yep. And then you're running a, a, that looks like the, uh, the Magpul. Um, oh, no, is that, is that a, that's the one where you put the one, uh, one two, three batteries in the tube yep. uh, as a backup batteries. And then you got aluminum mags. This is pre Magpul. Yeah, P Max. So, so that's uh, whatever kind of gorilla tape we could find with 550 cord. And we used to run with this thing, man, like doing land warfare. We'd have open ended carabiners or non locking carabiners. So instead of dropping your mag in the field, you clip them in. So that's a training artificiality. <laughs> I mean, because even then, like, I mean, you, it doesn't give you anything. It's not like you're going to be able to pull on those. I don't know why we did it. But yeah. I mean, all the old guys say to do it, so you do it. Are you wearing it? Why are you wearing a. Uh are you wearing a pimp grip on that on that gun? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind was it? The standard uh, uh, knight's armament, like pimp the, grip. Yeah, the standard vertical yeah. forward grip, the little slide yeah. on one that wasn't worth a shit. Yeah. 
Yep. And got then you that. got a janky sling set up, yep. lots of plastic nylon. Exactly, like terrible sling. We had in a single point configuration. We had that seat, that was back in the days of Dwayne Dieter. Yeah. The muzzles were, get back, get back. Yeah. So everybody ran a single point so you could throw it. Not very practical, especially not for climbing up and over walls. Well, you didn't know anything. Was that trip all you expected? This is your first trip? Yep. Was that all you expected in combat? Or were you like, no. oh, we got to, this isn't? No. Yeah. Like, we, we have got to level this thing up. Yeah. Okay. Man, incredible story behind the photo. Um, if you hone it in, the, see that sleep setup? That's like literally our beds. Yeah, but <laughs> that is a OD green military issued cot with a two inch foam mattress and that is six months straight. Yes. Bottle if, water showers and. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, when I was in Afghanistan in this same rotation, I did a nine mother in a fire base and we didn't figure out that we could actually put pads on top of the cots until like <laughs> month five. And I'm like, why have we never done this? And like, what's happening? Um, but uh, the idea of always upgrading your situation, sometimes we're just too busy because we're just busy going out doing, you know, bad things to bad people. Um, cool, man. I, GBRS, uh, we're going to have more of these. I actually think we should do another one of these just for shits and giggles because it's cool. I even uh, am, am curious behind it. There's not enough time in the YouTube algorithm for us to invest a lot of time. That's what we got podcasts for and long form stuff. But if you guys want to, uh, check out GBRS. What are a couple of your links? What GBRS? GBRSgroup.com, GBRS Group Gear. We have uh, sub links on all the channels to kind of push it. Patreon. Yeah, Patreon. GBRS Group. Yeah, we should do some bonus footage for Patreon members as well. Um, guys, check out the links down below. Um, thanks, DJ, for showing up, man. No, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for being out here. Yeah. This is cool. It's cool to talk about this history. I remember it so well. Um, might have sniffed you in that bunk right there. I might have been like, mm -hmm. who's that? Yeah. That's DJ. Let's go to war. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Till next time. Peace out. Appreciate it.